Benedict Cumberbatch has been waging war on filming in the theatre after his performance of Hamlet in a new London production was disrupted by smartphones in the audience. Uh, the British actors labelled it mortifying. Uh, so do theatres now need to become phone free? Here with us now is the actor and West End theatre producer, Mark Sindon. Mark, thanks very much indeed Andrew, for coming in. Uh, first of all, it's an interesting word, mortifying, <laughs> for uh, Benedict Cumberbatch to use, as if, as if he absolutely just felt eviscerated by the prospect of being filmed I by someone's phone. I can't describe how irritating it is when you have that little red light going and people pointing cameras at you. I think the big problem is that most of the audience, 99% of the audience, don't realise that if you can see the actor, the actor can see you. This is what's going on. You can actually see the audience very clearly on most productions. So you suddenly see people going like that, you know, with their phones, and it, it, it's distracting. Not only is it distracting for us on stage, when that screen comes on, it's like a bloody great arc light coming on in the audience, because they're all in the darkness, and suddenly this shaft of light breaks out. And you go, what's that? You know, and it's difficult enough getting through the play without... I mean, there is that. a tendency generally for the audience to underestimate how much part they do play in a theatre production, isn't there? Totally, totally. And what is irritating is that the technology exists to stop it. Um, I, I was actually having lunch with someone who was playing... He illegally imported one of these blockers, and we were at a restaurant. And I said, well, how effective is it? And he set it up, and suddenly all over the restaurant, people going, hello? You know, <laughs> blocked it. It's there. The problem is the Telecommunications Act. And there is a way around this. Uh, the Telecommunications Act, as you know, is what stops hacking phones yes. and everything like that. The way around it is in the terms and conditions when you buy a ticket to go to the theatre, there's a little sub-clause saying, we agree that for the duration of the show, our phones are blocked. And you can target, it doesn't suddenly do the whole of the West End, it targets a very specific area, and that would stop it. If people, as I've had as a producer, people saying, oh, but I need to know the babysitter's all right, or uh, uh, I'm a doctor on call, that was my favourite one, I said, what the hell are you doing at the theatre then? You should be elsewhere. I mean, the trouble is, of course, even if you block the phones, the phone still has things it can do without a signal card. It can be used as a video camera. Then it's down to education. Yeah. So let's talk about the culture. Yeah. Uh, the cult because it's not just the theatre, isn't it? It's the cinema. It's oh. going to someone's talk. Yes. It's uh, speeches. It's yeah. any, any darkened room. Well, it's uh, like me getting a phone out now and filming you. I mean, we joked about yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I made yeah. sure mine was off. I suddenly yeah. thought, wouldn't it be awful? <laughs> but, you know, because audiences also suffer from other members of an audience. You know, when, when you're at the cinema, the, the, the actors are safe because it's just a recording. Sure. Uh, but, the, but when someone three rows in front of you starts to take a text message, that, that light... Not just that. I was at the cinema to... two nights ago and the phone rang. And not only did it ring, he answered it. And there was a conversation. I'm in the cinema at the moment and you're going... Mm -hmm. So that's a cultural thing. I mean, yeah. how do we, you know, how were we educated as, as, as theatre goers in a certain time, and how can we our revisit parents, that now? Our parents, that's what did it. Um, you, you would, when you were young, you went to the theatre, opera, cinema, whatever, live performance with your parents. And if you, well, we didn't have mobiles. No, but we did more is, sitting quietly, didn't we? Absolutely. Uh, and you were taught how to do that. But I think what it is, is the lack of respect for other people, other audience members, certainly the actors on stage. And it sounds awful, but the vast majority of audiences in the theatre, if you put a, an on and off knob and a volume knob either side of the proscenium arch, they'd be very happy. They think it's a big television screen. Mm. And so television has ruined it. You and I are married, you come, I'm watching something, you come, do you want a cup of tea? You, you, you know, and you yeah, don't... Yeah, you're talking while exactly. all this is happening. Yeah. And, and you don't... R realize that is a moment. Well, quite often the audiences round on rogue members of the audience, you know. Not and, enough. And say, but you think not enough? Not no, enough. I, I, I think people should be named and shamed. Mm. And I think if people very loudly say, oh, turn that off now, please, that would hopefully embarrass them. There'd be a fight. <laughs> well, well, more in the cinema, perhaps, than in the theatre. I mean, the theatre tends to be a certain sort of sanguine type of, uh, of audience. But in the cinema, of course, there's some people feel they'd like to say that but it would be perilous to do Sanguine that. Sanguine is a very good word. That there is, one goes down perilously a snobby route that, dare one say it, the people that go to the theatre are of a different mindset, shall we say, that necessarily go to the, the, the cinema or football. Uh, I mean, opera is even more elitist. 
so that you know if you cough in opera you you get stuff <laughs> thrown thrown at you but in theater I, I remember dear lovely Roger Rees who died only the other day watching Nicholas Nickleby which was a forgive me but I think it's nine hours we did in two sections I, I did I don't remember breathing you sat there just watching this performance I wouldn't have thought, oh, I must film, uh, film this. Why are you filming it? I think it? still good 60 to 80% of the audience are feeling like that in oh, the theatre so. production. And I think it's still, sorry, we're running out of time, but very quickly. No, I, was you Benedict, are, I'm not. Was, Benedict, <laughs> was Benedict perhaps just suffering a bit of first time? Not at all. Poor review, no, nerves no, or something? This goes, I, my, my father, uh, who died uh, end of last year, he stopped a couple of performances. Uh, and just walked down front and said, are you going to stop filming or am I? You know, because I'll, I'll wait until you've finished. And that's the way to do it. I, I know it breaks the moment, but if people are embarrassed, mm. then we can win. That's the only way of doing it. And it isn't Benedict being a little uppity or anything yeah. like that. Good. Uh, Martin, thanks very much indeed for joining us. At Not at all. Here in